exactly as that, uh, to, to blow into the fresh grass behind you, and the whole moorland fire starts again. And also tonight, trade parade. We talk to the frantic farmers fighting to keep their crops alive during one of the driest springs ever. And the loneliness of the long distance runner. We meet the woman doing 10 marathons in 10 days in memory of her mum. Well, after that very cold start, it turned out to be a lovely day. Kirkham Abbey uh, looking beautiful with uh, some sunshine. How long will this fine weather last? All the answers coming up. You know, the fire in Oven and Mornay, Halifax, has now become the longest-running incident of its type that West Yorkshire Fire Service has dealt with for several years. It began on Saturday afternoon, and it's still smouldering. Firefighters appear to be on top of that fire and the one at Nivermore. However, they say all our uplands were a potential tinderbox and could easily be set off again by either negligence or malice. Let's join Spencer Stokes at Oven and Moor near Halifax. Spencer. Well, two and a half square miles of Ovenden Moor above Halifax is still burning. Not this section here, but acres and acres of land behind me. West Yorkshire Fire Service say this is now the longest running blaze they've had to deal with for around about 15 years. The wind turbines, an iconic picture here on the near have been, moor, have been turned off. And that's because they're linked by an underground cable. And this ground here is extremely warm. The cable is down there, so that's been done for safety reasons. Now, it's not just Ovenden Moor that's been affected by the blaze today. There's also been a fire at Blackstone Edge a few miles from here. And my colleague, Neil Smallburn, has been taking a look at the picture across West Yorkshire. Flames, acrid smoke and unbearable heat. Fire crews from across Yorkshire and the Peak District have spent the last few days fighting more than fires. So this last weekend we've had a number of serious building fires, more than fires, plus all the normal activity we've had as well. So it's been a very, very busy period for us over the last four days. Results wise, we're coping fine at the moment. Uh, obviously, if this dry weather continues for any significant length of time further, then it's going to put a bit of a strain on us if we get more, more than fires. From Cliff Ridge Wood up in North Yorkshire to Peak Low Moor in Derbyshire, a path of destruction. Today, firefighters were still at London Moor near Halifax. This fire is not easy to put out. For five long days now, they've been trying to tame it. We're transporting a lot of water up here to put it out. Over time, we would be able to put it out, but it seems uh, a lot of resources uh, for just somebody still put it in. It's the heather and the peat that's alight, and it's burning down deep into the ground. So deep, in fact, that the wires connected to the wind turbines are at risk. And as a precaution, they've made the decision to turn them off. A few miles down the road, more crews and another fire. Yesterday evening, ten engines from across West Yorkshire were sent to Blackstone Edge above Mythenwald. Unlike the Ovenden blaze, this one was a grass fire. It moved quickly across the dry landscape, fanned by the high winds. A helicopter was called to dump water from the nearby Batingstam Reservoir. At one point, the line of fire was 300 metres long. In all, it took the firefighters a good 12 hours to bring it under control, well into this morning. Nearly a square mile of moorland burned and blackened. The next job is to make sure the blaze does not flare up again. Neil Smallburn, BBC with more. Well, this really is a scene of devastation. When you look into the distance, the blaze and the smoke really just seems to go on and on, almost like the crater of a volcano. Hundreds of firefighters from across West Yorkshire have been involved over the last few days. And when they've been working on this charred, hot sur surface, it's been quite difficult for them. And one firefighter was quite badly injured when he fell over this morning. Get a feel of what that work's been like. I've been with a fire crew at Blackstone Edge near Mythen Roy, spending the morning with them to see exactly what their work involves. The helicopter that's played such a key role in getting this fire under control touches down for a final time. It's dumped thousands of litres of water onto what was a blazing moorland. And it was helped by fire crews from across West Yorkshire who have been here since yesterday evening. Part-time firefighter Rob runs a pub three days a week. This was his first moorland blaze. It's a team effort, like all the lads have been drafted. So, yeah, it's, it's been good. Good 
team effort. Oh, everybody that's been here has been working hard through the night, so it's been a good effort. So whilst one crew takes a rest, others begin their work. It's wildfire expert Andy Newman's job to assess whether it's safe to leave the scene. He begins a long walk around the fire perimeter and soon establishes why the moor burned so fiercely last night. We've got tens of thousands of, of acres of this and at the moment, it, as you can see, it's absolutely bone dry. There's, there's nothing to it. It's a very, very, uh, what we would call a fine fuel and uh, when this catches fire, uh, the heat that's produced in the flame front is absolutely enormous. From a distance, the blaze looks like it's been extinguished, but the ground is hot and Andy soon discovers a burning tussock. All we need is one ember from this uh, fire that, that you can see just developed as quickly as that uh, to, to blow into the fresh draft behind you and the whole moorland fire starts again. That's all, all it will take, one, one small uh, tussock. The best way to put it out is to kick it out, but to ensure it doesn't return, the area is hosed. And Andy also calls for the backpack team. We've got the job now with our little uh, aqua backpacks to fill up with water and go around all the little hot spots that we see, uh, kick them, which, which reveals more hot ground, and then try and put them out best we can with our backpacks. With the moorland doused from the helicopter, hosed by the crews, and now sprayed at close quarters, the firefighters are finally winning the battle. They can begin winding down the operation. But as long as the dry and sunny conditions continue, they suspect it won't be long before they're back at work on Yorkshire's moorland. The work of the firefighters up at Blackstone Edge above Mydenroy earlier today. Now the big fear is what this is all going to mean for the countryside and the ecology of this moor. Joining us now is David Wilson from Coldwell Council. Evening David. Good evening. What does it mean for the ecology? It's extremely bad. The fire has been very, very hot and it's got not only through the surface layer but straight through into the seed bank. So this will prevent any further regeneration on this moor. On top of that, of course, the whole generation of moorland birds has been completely wiped out. But occasionally we see moorland being burned off on purpose, so what's different here? That is a management tool that's used to burn off the woody part of the plant and encourage a fresh gener uh, regeneration of the uh, plant that the moorland birds can actually feed off. Um, that's usually done in early part of the year when the moor itself would be very wet. That's how the wildlife will be affected. What about the general public? Are they going to be affected in any way? Well, obviously, if, if with areas like this, we can't have people wandering around. So large areas of open access, we'd prefer if people stuck to the footpaths and was very vigilant in what they did with the cigarette ends. Don't light any fires at all. That would be really silly. Uh, and even litter. Um, I've picked up uh, quite a few glass bottles today, and any one of them, with the sunlight we've been having, could have like a magnifying glass and, and just keep them all up. The more that's just so dry. David Wilson, thank you ever so much for joining us here on Ovenden Moor this evening. West Yorkshire Fire Service have been updating me in the last few minutes, and they say they expect to be here until it rains. That's not likely to happen until the weekend. Tanya and Harry, back to you. Spencer, thanks very much indeed. The dry weather is taking its toll on Yorkshire's farmers. They're already having to use next year's stock of feed for their animals because this year's crop has failed to grow. Many carpenter reports. Bright blue sky, unbroken sunshine and a patchwork of fields and trees below. It's another beautiful day in rural North Yorkshire. But close up, all is certainly not well. This spring barley went in in March. It should be six or eight inches high by now, but it's stunted, yellow, it's dying. The crop can't grow, neither can the grass. Andrew Wilson's dairy herd may be out in the fields, but there isn't enough for them to eat. Milk yield is down by three to four hundred litres a day. It's had a devastating effect because spring is usually a time when we get a real flush of grass and it really boosts our milk production. But we rely on raised grass is the cheapest way of producing milk. It's a very disappointing financially, yeah. But we're just hoping that we get rain and, and the grass grows and we get over it. Of course, you couldn't wish for better weather for calving and lambing. Rosie Dunn's had a bumper spring for both, but she's worried about the future. I've never known it so dry in the month of sort of March and April. It's been really, really dry. We've had almost six weeks without any rain at all. 
many farmers that are um, feedstock that are non-existent virtually. We used all the feed up last winter to feed the animals in the spring. And we were hoping you know, for an early spring and a good summer to replenish those stocks. So, yes, it's vitally important that it does rain shortly at some point. It's only the first week of May, but it looks and feels like high summer, at least in the daytime. But last night, there was a frost. It got Rosie's new potatoes. Danny Carpenter, BBC Wood North. Well, how dry has it actually been? Well, it has been exceptionally dry. I mean, I, you know, if I told you all the statistical records that have been broken, we'd run out of time. But I think the best one's probably Church Fenton, where March was their dry stone record, and now April is their dry stone record. But Brad Bradford List Department goes back over 100 years. They've had their dry staple on record, so it has been almost unprecedented. But we all know it's going to end, don't we? Well, it usually does. I think that um, the drought could well come to an end this weekend. There could be one or two showers before we get to the weekend. And don't get me wrong, it's not going to be a complete washout. There will be some warm sunshine around. But there's every chance that we could have some prolonged, potentially heavy rain at some stage, probably into Saturday night, which uh, will satisfy the farmers, I think. So there is now an end in sight. Is it going to be just a couple of days of rain, though? Because the way people are talking, they can do it for almost a couple of weeks, I think, couldn't they? Well, that's a very good question. I think it's finally balanced next week as to whether we stay unsettled or whether the high pressure comes back in. Uh, so I think, as I said, the good news is there is some decent rainfall to come up this weekend. It's too early to say whether that then marks a change to much more unsettled weather next week. Okay, we'll pass later. Later, on the north. From York to New York. <laughs> yeah, he's probably normal metal band from Yorkshire who struck a chord in America. 